challenges facing the indigenous community today, people on Quora are sharing their experiences. Samantha Josh commented, I work with Audi and Voice, but let's dive into the surprising facts about Aboriginal problems in Australia. The Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander population has a life expectancy that is about 8 10 years lower than non-Indigenous Australians, which is significant health disparity. This gap is attributed to various factors, including higher prevalence of chronic diseases, such as diabetes, as well as a higher infant mortality rates. One of the major challenges is the lack of access of adequate healthcare services, particularly in rural and remote areas for Aboriginal Australians. Did you know that only 65% of Aboriginal students complete year 12, compared to 85% of non-Indigenous students? Lastly, very critical shortage of indigenous professionals in key fields such as law, medicine and education, which exacerbates the lack of indigenous representation in leadership positions and perpetuates systematic inequality. In fact, only 1% of Australian professionals in these fields are indigenous Australians. Mark Chan added that the first and the greatest part of a problem is that there are two distinct groups of aborigines. One group still leaves a modified form of traditional experience. Obviously, they have a different viewpoint and choose to remain where they are rather than changing their way of life. The only change of their way of life is that a hunter-gatherer lifestyle is not necessary. No exercise and unhealthy takeaway food, less alcohol and no drugs have arrived. The traditional life saw the people constantly on a move, so keeping environment clean was not necessary. Existence in a filthy environment has brought previously unknown problems. Ignoring alcohol, tobacco, drugs, eye and skin diseases has led to children born with fatal alcohol syndrome, obesity and diabetes. Boredom is obviously a factor in the massive levels of domestic and family violence. Likewise, a higher level of sexually transmitted diseases. The other group of aborigines are urban dwelling of predominantly white ancestry and not only have no disadvantages, have access to special benefits and available for others. The list of state-based organizations which exist for very special benefit is huge. They are very well funded with the access to the governments where they have very loud voice. On the Commonwealth level, special funding runs into the tens of billions annually. There is a very large number of organizations responsible for the minister who is appointed for their special benefit. The most prominent, NIAA, has a multi-billion dollar budget and a massive staff. So the life and health circumstances of the two groups are totally different. The issue is that there are two distinct groups of aborigines in Australia. The full bloods obviously prefer their way of life, that chosen by possibly 90% of population. Throwing money at a perceived problem by a different group who have no understanding of the attitudes of a few has done much harm and no good. There are no easy solutions, but the most practicable would be to separate a suitable sized area of a country where aborigines are able to return to their hunter-gatherer lifestyle. Provide a system of communications to allow the access of emergency services, but nothing else. Removed from the census, not obliged to pay taxes or obey so-called white man's law. In other words, give exactly what they are constantly demanded by Aboriginal Provisional Government. The question is how many of the urban dwellers will join the real Aboriginals? So that was just few thoughts of people on Quora. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'm gonna see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.